Well, good evening, everybody, fellow Toastmasters Honor guests. Here we are. This is Renational Networking Online. You should be seeing a shared screen. I certainly hope that you are. Can you see that? Okay. Fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for being here. It's going to be a 30 minutes of fun. I want to I want to give you a couple of different little things to keep in mind. This is going to be interactive. I'm going to ask you as we go through today's presentation to put in the comments on the chat. It might be useful just to open the chat box right now and just leave it open so you can see the different comments people are sharing during today's talk. Also, I can actually see all of you, which is for the most part with people that have cameras, and that's really nice. <laughs> and when that happens, maybe once in a while you raise your, per your personal hand, I'll be able to see you. I'll probably call on you once in a while. Just be prepared for those wonderful things. And just for some reason, I lost one little screen, but that's okay. I can still do this. Okay. So, are we ready? Let's begin. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. This is Relational Networking Online, and we're using boring slides, so you, at the end of this presentation, don't have to ask for them. Yes. You you are echoing. I am I echoing? You have some heavy, like, um, distortion in your mic for some reason. Ooh, really okay, okay. I, you know what? I had this problem before, earlier today. Can you change the setting on the mic? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes my setting changes. Is that any better? Yes. That is better. That's Fantastic. Better. Thousand okay, percent awesome, better. Awesome. Awesome. Sometimes when I go into a different Zoom link, it, it, it switches it around. It resets back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what did yeah. you do? I, I clicked on the different uh, switch uh, on my audio settings and just switch which, uh, my microphone. That's what I was suggesting, yeah. Before. You don't want to be omnidirectional. That, yes. <laughs> that might be what's happening. No, no, you don't want to do that. No, that's that's a good call. Thank you. We have some people coming into the call. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. We were just starting, so you haven't missed anything yet. Mm -hmm. This is good. But okay. Manny, Manny, you're going to need to slow down. We can't keep up with you, and it's echoing badly. I went back to echoing went back again. to echoing? <laughs> what is this? It's possessed. It is. But it didn't switch. How's that? Is that better? It's a little better. No. Oh. Hmm. Huh. That's intriguing. I'm going to do something here. Let me go to my audio settings. My sincerest apologies. What mic are you using? I'm using a. You want me like the brand of the microphone? <laughs> that would be it. On, pro, on call tech service. Zing you microphone. Oh, okay. How is that? Is that better? Now. That's way better. Way better. There we go. Okay. Earlier no, I was on a call there. and they needed me to turn up the volume to hear me. I don't know why. <laughs> there we go. Did I sound like I was in a bucket before? Something like oh, that. Okay. That I've heard as well. Sounds like you're in a bucket. I'm and beginning to learn the difference. <laughs> It, it went back. <laughs> it's like, it's, it, it might be auto setting it back to the end to, um, oh, if it's related to volume, if you go into your audio settings in Zoom, there's a setting for auto correct your volume. And if you turn that off, um, it might be messing up with your settings. I, I didn't click on the automatically adjust microphone volume. Let's see. I'm wondering if your computer microphone might be better than that because it's pretty bad. Okay. Can you just ditch the microphone? <laughs> Let's try that. that that's audible. You have to talk for us to hear. We have to have you test it first. How's that? There we go. Is that, that better? That works yeah. a lot better. Yep. Okay. There you go. 
Great. <laughs> okay. Let's make this happen. <laughs> Let's do this, people. Oh. Now, now tell us what you did so we know what to do. <laughs> I listen to people tell me what to do, and I just figured I just unplugged my microphone. See? It's dead. <laughs> my microphone died. <laughs> I, honestly, I have no idea. That was I great. have no idea what, what just happened. But if you can hear me right now, which it looks like you can, yeah. And I don't sound like I'm in a bucket and I don't sound echoey. <laughs> we are beginning to get somewhere. <laughs> Let's continue with this journey. And as we begin today's session, I want to kick things off with my with my fellow assistant, James. Thank you for being here. I want to sh- I want him to share a, a brief video just to kind of get us in the mood and the spirit of what we're going to be talking about today. Before I mastered my, I wanted to Zoom. Why can't you hear me? (laughs) Hello? Did we lose James? Anytime now, James. (laughs) Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. (laughs) Can Can you see the screen? We see the guy kicking the the ball. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's might just some people might see it, some people might not. So it looks like manually you have to unscrew your screen and then go back. Okay. Right okay. Cool. Before I mastered my virtual image, I wanted to zoom. Why can't you hear me? Hello. I tried to zoom. Hello? Thanks to master your virtual image, Zoomcast, I learned to zoom with confidence and charisma. While I'm not sure about charisma, I am sure that if you attend the next Master Your Virtual Image Zoomcast on June 15th, you'll learn tips that will help you shine online. Join me and many others at Digital Transformation Toastmasters. The link is below. We start at 7 p.m. sharp. See you then. Thank you. So for those of us that missed the June 15th training, and for those of you for those of you who want to be cloned into being two people, that's not why we're here. That was just a wonderful icebreaker for us to have a laugh and consider that in this virtual world we are living in right now, networking online can be both very challenging, but can also be very fun. So today we're just gonna spend a little bit of time getting into what that means, some ideas, and I hope, my sincere hope is that I'm not sharing anything that is brand new to you. Therefore, I'm gonna be asking you to share your experiences, also share your knowledge via the chat. I know that we're gonna have some fun, and what I wanna do is I'm gonna continue with that fun as we continue to learn about relational networking online. Hopefully you can see the presentation again. We're getting this. We are getting this. Well, first, I want to ask you a question. And please use the chat function if you have it open already. If not, open it up. I want to ask you, how do you define networking? What's your definition of networking? Seeing, seeing some of those comments. Connecting, relating, sharing value with others, helping others. Okay, meeting new people, connecting with others, paying it forward. Now I want to ask you another question then. Why do we engage in networking? Why do we take the time to 
go to networking events. Why don't we take the time to do that? Mm -hmm. Expand our share of influence. People are awesome. Growth opportunities. Learning. For some of us, we want to be known. Perhaps we have a, a product or a service that we want to share. Human beings, we need to connect. These are all fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing these. And now, let me ask you then, what are some of the challenges of today when it comes to networking virtually, networking online? What are some of those challenges? What are some of those difficulties that you might be experiencing? Definitely more intentional. Poor internet connection. Microphones that die on the line. <laughs> You don't bump into people on the way to the bathroom. <laughs> That's great. Linear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, feeling your audience is engaged. Lack of side conversations. There's so much we can learn when we hear different people having little side conversations, especially if, you know, it's an interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. Right. So those are challenges, definitely. But there's also opportunities when it comes to networking online. And I want to feature some of those opportunities. Really, at the end, there's, there, there are some differences, sure. But there are certainly lots more similarities as to why we can continue to meet people, talk to people, engage with people online, network with them. Now, I don't know about you. But I've been to networking events and networking groups, and people will tell me, hey, what do you do? And, you know, what is this progress, this service, or this club, or the group that you are part of? And I'll get asked, you know, why? Why do you do this? You know, tell me why. And it reminds me first of the Backstreet Boys. Tell me why. You know, it's, it's nothing but a heartache. But really, why? Why are you doing what you're doing? Oh, thank you, Ginger. Oh, thank you. Hi, welcome. <laughs> so I'm going to ask my assistant to share a video about why, why Toastmasters. Someone once told me that in order to inspire others, you need to speak from the heart. And my heart is connected to so many causes, and I want nothing more than to share their stories with rooms full of people. But the problem is, I've spent nearly three decades of my life being absolutely terrified about speaking in front of people, nervous to the core. When I present in front of people, you can physically see my hand shaking. You can hear- Thanks for having problems seeing the video. And sometimes you can- uh, let me double check. I'm sharing that screen. Are you still sharing yours? Oh, there we go. Well, let's try that again, everybody. We can All see right. it now. Thank cool. you, James. There we go. He's got a tough job tonight. Someone once <laughs> told me that in order to inspire others, you need to speak from the heart. And my heart is connected to so many causes. And I want nothing more than to share their stories with rooms full of people. But the problem is... I've spent nearly three decades of my life being absolutely terrified about speaking in front of people, nervous to the core. When I present in front of people, you can physically see my hand shaking. You can hear my voice quivering. And sometimes you can see my antiperspirant failing. But after 10 years, four states and one foreign country, of knowing that I needed to do something about this fear and get over it, I finally took the plunge and joined Jefferson Speakers Toastmasters about three weeks before the pandemic hit. But some may wonder why. Why are you putting yourself in this stressful situation, especially during a pandemic? But what I found was the opposite. It's not stressful. Uh, instead, I found a group of people that are supportive and encouraging, and the technology of Zoom calls is actually helping transition my nervousness into confidence, and it's those baby steps. 
of talking in front of 10 to 15 people on a Zoom call that one day it's my hope that when we meet again in person, I will then have that confidence to speak in front of a whole room full of people. And I also enjoy our Toastmasters meetings because it's here that I'm learning to use my voice to inspire. And I'm doing that by listening and learning from the experienced Toastmasters in my group. And I also follow the Pathways Learning Experience that helps me build skills that I need to communicate, to lead, and to inspire. Thank you. Overcome fear of public speaking and then master. <laughs> All right, thank you. So that was Melanie Hayden Kincaid from Jefferson uh, Speakers and earlier Rebecca Murray from Digital Transformation Toastmasters. So you can see there's lots of goodness out there, but I want to ask this My Why video, and why my, my Why videos are not necessarily anything new to Toastmasters, but I want to ask you if you could share in the chat uh, what stood out for you in that video. When you watch that video, what was something that that resonated with you? She spoke to the camera, made it feel like she was talking to us directly. Good eye contact. We talk about eye contact in Toastmaster. She definitely did that. The confidence to be vulnerable. Don't we sometimes feel? even though we we're perhaps experienced Toastmasters or maybe just starting out when we were in the, in that physical setting, we felt a bit vulnerable. The enthusiasm in her voice, she really projected that in, in her conversation. It's, she spoke from the heart. It was authentic. Connection. I love your comments. Thank you so much. And, I want to ask then, how how is this my why video that you saw similar to networking with people face to face? Same fundamentals, yeah, the eye contact. Mm -hmm. We're still people. the soul. I love I love your comments and, and your you know, just the ability to share these things on your chat. Mm -hmm. and feel your energy. And that's the first thing that I noticed right off the bat. Yes, thank you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask something. My my uh, my slides are not nearly as important as the content that I was able to find across many Toastmasters Club in the district. And since you're not gonna be asking for them anyhow, I shall not share them because it kills the chat when I stop my share and poor James is having to scramble more and more and more and he's really got the good stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and step aside and not share my slides, but if you're still interested in seeing my terrible artwork, I shall share them with you if you so select. At the end of our presentation, I promise you, I promise you that in the chat, I will share with you all the links to everything you have seen tonight. And that's what you really care about anyhow. Not my boring slides. I will do that for you. Just for you. Because you're in room one. Let us continue on our journey. Because it's really important. These are really good things that we need to talk about. Because, you know, networking is important. It, it's the lifeblood that brings people to our clubs. It keeps us energized. It keeps us fresh and new. So speaking of fresh and new, when was the last time you looked at your website, your club's website? Does it look so BC before COVID? Is it Arcadian? Mr. James here very shortly is going to share with us an example of one of our fellow clubs that they have moved up to now COVID. They're no longer BC. Are you able to see the share? If you notice, once again, props and shout outs to Digital Transformation. 
what really struck me with this particular website is you can see their club members smiling right on the right on the homepage. Little videos you can click on and watch, and they're pretty short actually. Very creative, very ingenious. These are the people that clone themselves, by the way, digital transformation. If you didn't notice, it's the same club. I want to ask you, um, what what other types of Toastmasters websites have you seen lately that have moved out of BC and into today's world? <laughs> I agree. They were avant-garde. Yes. Almost looks like something very, you know, like, like Campbell's soup. Painting. What kind of websites have you noticed lately when it comes to Toastmasters? What, you, what have you been doing? with your club's website. I have a Zoom image on the front page. That way you definitely know where you are meeting. Think of our Zoom, a picture of our Zoom call. It's really helpful. Screen capture of our Facebook page. Yeah, that's pretty smart too. Thank you for sharing these. There are lots of opportunities for us to take our web pages right now that might look a little bit before COVID and update those to current COVID times. And I'm guessing before everything is all over, we'll probably end up updating them again and again and again. How exciting, how exhilarating. I want to share with you also a Facebook page. And it's going to be props again for uh, Jefferson speakers because it was very similar to our Jefferson speakers Facebook page. Are you able to see that? If you can see their page, give me a nod. Great. You know what I really like about it? There's so many influence influencers. They got their videos posted up there. You know, Phil and and their team, they're just pretending to be just big time influencers on Facebook. You want to be an influencer on Facebook? Check out their page. Let me ask you then, what kind of things have you been noticing on social media sites for Toastmasters clubs? I've got so many smiles. A lot of inputs there, but if you think of something, throw it in the chat. And lastly, when you go to networking meetings, yes, it's great to know why somebody's doing something, but people want to know what value you bring. Similarly, if somebody's going to come and visit our club, they want to know what value they can gain from being in our club. James is going to share one final video, one final video that's going to share with you what kind of value can you gain from a Toastmasters experience? And you might recognize the face. Hi everybody, it's a rainy day here in Washington State. I have to tell you though, nothing can dampen an event, an awards banquet, a conference, than a keynote speaker that just goes on and on and on and on and never seems to end. And all you wanna do is get the person off the stage. I'm gonna give you a quick tip on how to prepare a five to seven minute speech every single time through the use of a very simple tool. I learned this a few years ago in Toastmasters, and here, let me show you the tool. Okay, well, this is my interpretation of the tool. You just need to know what's in the tool that's most important. It's pretty, come on, don't knock it. Half inch margins, double spaced, 12 to 14 font, Arial or Times New Roman. If you follow this particular template, I promise you, each and every time you will deliver a five to seven minute speech. Each page turns out to be about three and a half minutes. So for seven minute speech, the front and the back of your paper has writing on it. Say it's a 10 minute speech you need, the front, the back, and then page three, the front of the piece of paper. You get the picture if you need more time or if you need less time. I promise, if you follow this pattern every single time you speak, you will be welcomed 
as a wonderful keynote speaker, one that did not ramble on and on, one that did not bore anybody. If you like this tool, if you like these particular techniques, or if you have some additional ways that you prepare for keynote speeches, go ahead and drop those comments and let us know how we can become better speakers. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay dry and stay safe. Welcome to our clubs. They, they want to see what kind of value they can gain from that experience. I, I want to ask you, what did you find of value when you watched that video? It was a visual aid that was used. It proved the, the concept and how it's useful, the simplicity. Easy to follow instructions. <laughs> yeah, interesting way to frame a speech. Absolutely. Yeah, different location. Yes. Is it, rain? it was rainy earlier this year when I did that. <laughs> You might have noticed already, and, and I will make sure that it gets posted again. The uh, I'm going to share once more all the links for you for all the different videos that you saw and the websites that you saw. I just posted that on there. Put that a couple times. You can always download these comments, save them. And that way you've got all the information you need. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys' patience, especially getting all the little bugs out in the beginning. James, thank you so much for being there, for being my assistant, and I look forward to seeing you on the other side. Be safe. Thank you so much, Manny. <laughs>